Yo, we're back, and this hopefully very clearly, let's see if that gets better lighting in here, is not a 1985 Porsche. This is a 1988 Mitsubishi Mighty Max with a carbureted 2.6 liter. It is the perfect size to do what I am hopefully looking to do. And today we're going to be putting a new starter in it, and it came with a lot of parts to fix most of the problems. I've got a lot of content that we can make. You can actually tear stuff apart and get progress on something, so that's pretty cool. So that's what we're going to do. All right, we're going to start with pulling this battery out of here, which is a little weird. All of the terminals are destroyed. Each one is slightly a different size for some reason. You always want to make sure that you uh, use the extension so that your battery and your wrench always make contact while you're doing this. We're going to get the back of the starter down there. So on this thing is a 13. All right, clock the speed run to uh, lost parts. That was it. Record time. Bam. Starter's disconnected. Let's get under there and uh, pull the rest of it out. All right, so now we get the old trusty screwdriver and scissor jack out. We start picking this thing up just enough that I actually fit under the truck. Makes it a whole lot easier. Cool. Love it here. I really need a new scissor jack and jack handle. The starter. If I can get you guys an angle here, is right up there. So we're gonna get the old, the old zipper out here and rip that thing off. All right, there's one bolt. Remember, if you can always pay someone to work on your car, do it. It's not worth doing anything yourself. It always sucks. This thing in here, and then the entire engine is going to be in the way. If I stick this here, the entire truck is in the way. So I have to put this on first. Wish I could get a better camera angle to show you what I'm doing here. See that I'm completely wrapped around the engine block and the entire car. Remember, wear, wear your gloves so that your hands don't get dirty. It's always worth it. Then you get under the intake manifold and you get caught on everything. And somewhere there's a starter right here. You can reach down past the speedometer cable and the heater core. You can cut your knuckle open real quick. And you hold the starter in a really specific spot right there. And the bolt comes out by hand. And I cannot find that specific spot. And now that my knuckle blood is all over the bolt head, I can barely spin it. Here we go. And then rip the entire rest of your wiring harness out as you pull the starter out of the car. And there we go. Now, if you notice, here's our old starter. And here's our new starter. And they look really different. Everything about that is really weird. According to everyone, this is the correct starter. You can tell by the part number right here. You can see that it says M1T7. And then when they rebuild these, they sandblast this number off. So hopefully that part's correct. But this starter, as you can see, says, uh, where's the camera? says M3T, something, something, something. And that is absolutely not correct. I believe that this goes to the two liter truck. And the reason that it's so fat is that the two liter truck doesn't have a gear reduction on the starter where the 2.6 liter truck has a gear reduction. And that gear reduction is a big fat piece here. So it only needs a small starter body, or the other one's big, 
get the torque it needs. But I can't really tell without measuring. I'm not getting the measuring tools out. The other starter, this ring here, felt too small. You'd put it in there and move the whole thing around. And that wasn't right. And then this whole head didn't come up far enough to engage the flywheel teeth. So half the starter teeth were engaging. And then I don't know if it's the correct diameter. And it would just strip them out. And then, like I said, I don't see why the starters don't work. Other than one's gear driven and one isn't. Because this one's just as loose in the starter housing as the 2 liter starter. So now we climb in here. We get all the way up behind the damn thing. And we find the bolt. That's not it. It's that bolt. Luckily every bolt in this truck is the exact same size. So now that I can't see what I'm touching, I don't know. I'm on the bolt or not. And now that it's tight, we get our uh, 14 millimeter that fits it. And we get our 17 and we uh, hook it up something like that. And you stick it in here and you torque it down and you find your battery terminal wire. You go, nope, nothing's on fire. Cool. It's a good sign. Good start. And then. You hop back in here and you go, huh, that ain't right. That was a lot of smoke coming out of there. What, uh, what died? I don't have a fuel pump. Why do I not have a fuel pump? Do I have a starter? Nope, I don't have dash lights either. I had big smoke coming out of this box, right? And I've got this that says fuses. Get that out of here. And then I've got these fuses. Those 400 amp fuses over there. Also, I haven't shown you this. This is another fantastic issue with this truck. See this? See this wiring down here? How nice that is. We got that alligator clip run into that. Got a choke run into something here. This distribution block with a big ceramic 1K fuse. We've got all these chopped wires. I don't know what any of those go to. All right, so now that we're done joking about uh, burning the truck down, let's see if it'll start. Got it in neutral, put on the clutch. And I didn't plug, I didn't plug the starter in after figuring out why my truck was catching fire. Legitimately, there were actual flames in the engine bay. It was, it was pretty cool. I wish I had a more user-friendly camera so that I could have caught all that for you guys. It sounded a little weird. I don't remember it ever sounding like that. Um, it's getting really dark out. Probably can't even see me anymore. And now the cab, because the passenger door is open and my window's down, is full of all of those sick 80s catalytic fumes. So we're going to call it here. The next thing we're going to do is change the radiator because it's completely clogged. And then shortly thereafter that, hopefully pull the transmission out and rebuild it because it sounds horrendous on the highway. So that's it for today. I am going to go to bed now. This has been not fun.